Hi everyone, it's Mithril and welcome back to my journey of learning to draw. So in the last video I talked about how I'll be quitting my job soon to study art full time for a year starting in September. For now, I'm still working and also trying to finish up Evolve Artist, the art fundamentals program that I've been doing for the past year. You can find all the info up in the cards, a playlist of my Evolve Artist stuff, the last video I made, all that. So in preparation for going to study at the Art Academy, I've been trying to do as many block three paintings as I can. I'm trying to finish this up really quickly so then I can start getting into block four. And after a couple of block four paintings, Kevin says I should be ready to receive what is going to be taught over at the studio. So in the last few paintings, I've been getting the feedback that my colors are a bit off every time and that I just need to stop accepting less than my very best. So this time I went all out and I got it as exact as I could see. Unfortunately, I felt like I mixed the absolute perfect shade of purple, but I knew in my heart that there just was not enough to finish the cone on the painting. And it made me really nervous because I knew that I had to add more paint to it, right? To mix more of the purple. And if I started adding more colors, I was afraid I was just not gonna be able to get back to that perfect shade of purple that i just gotten to. But I told myself that I think this is what Kevin means when he's talking about confidence. And if I get to this point and I need more paint, I want to get to the point where I can say, yeah, obviously I'll just add more paint and mix it again. And I can only get to that point if I start now and start showing myself and proving to myself that I can mix that same color again. And once I gain that confidence, I'll never have to hesitate again about doing this and I can start worrying about higher level stuff. When I was mixing the paints, I felt for sure that it was spot on when I compared the paint to the photo, but somehow things looked off when I got it onto the canvas. I'm not sure if it was just like a little bit of graphite mixing into the paint when I was putting it on, or if my color mixing was really just that off, but it felt really weird seeing it not go on exactly how I thought it would in my mind. When I started on this homework, I saw that other people were adding in like the little creases in the fabric on the background, so I thought it would be cool to do that too. But the more I thought about it, the more I felt like those would be covered under highlights and reflections, which I'm not supposed to be doing yet. And I didn't really see a point in making more work for myself, so I just painted over the lines that I had traced out. This time I made sure to avoid not mixing enough paint because of my laziness and uh, not wanting to waste paint. And I found that this made everything so much less stressful. Like, I felt like I had enough to work with, so I treated it with more respect. The paints were less contaminated because I felt like I was able to clean off my brushes and knives. And I actually didn't feel that bad about wasting the paint at the end because that paint was used. It was used as a reserve to help me have the confidence to make the best painting that I could, to be able to clean up little mistakes that I saw because I had extra paint left, to be able to be a little bit more wild and adventurous with my mixing because I knew I had enough paint to fix those mistakes. I hadn't even realized how much I was holding back until this time when I actually had enough paint to work with. So I was super proud of this one and I felt like it was my best work yet. So then I submitted this homework and I got the feedback back the next morning. And there were some good points, but they also had a lot of critiques with the way I was doing my gradients and my paint density and some of the sharp edges. And they said that they wanted me to schedule an appointment with an instructor. And honestly, that made me feel kind of sad. <laughs> I don't know, I'm a pretty sensitive person probably too sensitive and it's something that I really need to work on, but it did make me feel down. But I just didn't have time to think about it because I'm trying to get through these lessons as fast as possible. I only have so many days left to work with. So I was like, all right, let's just buckle up and start doing the next assignment. So this is the next morning after finishing a painting like at midnight the previous evening. And I realized that I was sore and hurting from the last painting. Like whenever I'm mixing the paint, I'm constantly cleaning off the palette knife between like adding colors, mixing colors, and my forearm was really hurting from like doing this pinching motion. And also the side of my thumb here was also in pain from 
like pressing against the paper towels and I was like whoa I've never experienced this before because like this whole time I've been really taking my time with the paintings right so I would like do one and then wait at least three or four days sometimes a couple weeks before doing my next painting and now I'm realizing that if I'm going to be painting every day at like such a higher workload, that's something that my body really isn't prepared for and it's something that I'm not that prepared for either, right? Like if you do something every once in a while, you're probably not going to get any injuries from like repetitive strain if you have like a lot of time in between to heal. But I have never really focused on ergonomics or like doing stretches before and after doing artwork even though I've heard a lot of stories of people on the internet and my friends who have said that they have permanently injured their wrists, forearms, and hands due to not using correct form or not taking enough rests or not stretching properly. And this is the first time where I've really experienced like, I really need to take care of my body, <laughs> otherwise I'm not going to have any tools to work with before too long. So for this one, as I was painting, I felt like everything was just going wrong and it all looked terrible and I just couldn't get it to look the way that I wanted to. And I didn't mix enough paint. But this time I took the time to go back through every color to mix more paint and I kept messing with it until it looked a lot better. And I made sure that at least everything was neat and clean. I did get the feedback that my edges are razor sharp, but my gradients still lacking. In fact, ever since we've been introducing the gradients back into the paintings, my homework grader has been suggesting a lot that I need to start asking for help, I need to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with an instructor because my gradients are just struggling. So at this point I finally booked an appointment with an instructor, but that was like a week from now and I don't have that long to wait. So I booked it and I kept working. I feel like this painting was an accomplishment for me in a couple ways. First of all, it's the first painting that I've done sketching directly onto the canvas with paint that I actually picked a complicated subject for that I was a little nervous to be doing. On the other ones, I figured I should just work on one thing at a time, right? Like no need to complicate a color mixing exercise by adding in really hard shapes and stuff. But now I really wanted to prove to myself that I could do something harder. And this definitely looks more wonky and off proportion than the simpler stuff, but I see the potential there. I didn't fall flat on my face and I'm sure I'll be much improved in a couple dozen more paintings. Second of all, I finished it. And I'm proud of that. Halfway through the painting, everything looked like such a mess that I really didn't know if it would even turn out in the end. I felt really discouraged and like I overextended myself by taking on something I wasn't ready for and I just wanted to scrap it. I feel like this is an overall pattern in my life where I feel like I'm such a quitter and I tend to drop things when they get difficult, but I managed to stick it through and show myself that I can finish something that I found really difficult. My confidence in myself and my own ability to learn and finish things has been hugely impacted by my progress throughout Evolve and that feels really exciting to me. I feel like this is something that I did not expect going into things. Like, I thought that Evolve would just help me with giving me art fundamentals so I could study other art specialties quicker and easier. I didn't expect it to also give me the courage to attempt those things in the first place, and the tenacity to work through the difficult plateaus and trust the process until the end. Well, I guess I'm not sure if it'll give me that per se, but I feel changed having gone through this course so far. Before homework three, I had more videos, this time about like finishing off the paintings by adding highlights and reflections, and of course, that meant more procrastinating on watching them. And apparently this is the last stage of the painting process before we get into some very serious, very realistic painting. So for this next one, I had an hour to work on it in the morning, so I decided I wanted to get started on it before waiting until later so I could like actually use up these little bits of time now. And so I started to mix up some paint, do some painting, and I used clove oil instead of linseed oil because that's supposed to make it dry out slower. And when I had to go, I decided to put the paint palette into one of these Tupperware containers with a paper towel filled with clove oil because apparently that's supposed to help. And I put the brushes into another airtight container. 
Then I got back in six hours and I kept working on it. The paint that was mixed with clove oil was pretty nice to work with. I didn't feel any texture change after six hours, but the black paint seemed to dry faster than the other paint colors. And it looked like the really dark shadows that were mostly made out of black and a little bit of color, they were mostly dried compared to like the bright colors that didn't have any black in them. They stayed wet on the canvas, whereas the shadows were like pretty much dry when I came back. I started mixing up the colors for the pair and the paint seemed to have toughened up a bit and it was a bit hard to mix with a palette knife. It went onto the canvas fine when I mixed in some clove oil to thin it out. Then I had to go for the evening so I put the palette back into the airtight container. I got a paper towel and taped it onto the side of the container and I filled it up with clove oil so hopefully that would keep the paint from drying out as well. I came back the next morning and started working eight and a half hours later. Most of the unmixed paint blobs were okay, but the burnt umber did not survive. It was gross and it was clumped and I just needed to pour some of that straight out of the tube. Overall, some of the paints were a bit hard to mix with the palette knife because they were just, I don't know, stiffer, stickier. But after I mixed the right color and I added in a bit of oil to thin it out, it wasn't too bad getting it from the palette onto the canvas. One major problem with this though is that I just don't like the smell of clove oil. Like I'm kind of realizing that in blocks one and two with the black and white colors and stuff, I used a lot of clove oil with the paintings because most of them took me a couple days to finish. And it makes my head hurt, it makes the entire room smell bad, and I just did not like it. For block three, since I wasn't working over multiple days, I haven't been using clove oil and the smell of the paint has gone way down. But now that I brought back the clove oil, I don't know, it just makes me kind of nauseous, it makes my head hurt, and it's just not a good time. <laughs> So feedback on this one is I still have issues with the shadow values, like the mushroom is too dark, the vase is too light, and the hue on the mushroom wasn't correct. Uh, the gradient on the vase was good, but the gradient on the mushroom was too thin and not smooth. I had good sharp edges and good paint density. I feel like mixing up more paint definitely helped with the paint density issues I was having before because I could actually fill up the whole area and have paint to spare without needing to like thin it out a ton with oil. I've also been more willing to just remix any colors I needed rather than going without and ending up with an inferior painting. Next up is homework 14, my first fully complete painting from Observation that's in full color with highlights and reflections and everything. Lately, I've been feeling tempted to just sketch out the underdrawing onto the canvas in pencil instead of using the paint and the paintbrush because I know it would just be so much easier and more accurate than using the paint straight onto the canvas. However, I have to stop myself because I know in my heart that if I keep pushing through the frustration that eventually I will get better at it and it will get easier. If I go back to a crutch that makes things look better in the moment, then I'll never develop the skills to break out of that way of thinking and do art in a way that I'm actually aiming for. That being said, I feel like this painting does have a lot of structural issues. Like I made the chicken's butt jut out too far compared to the body, the head is too long, etc, etc. And it does feel bad because I feel like I could have done better if I just used these other tools. But I just keep reminding myself that even though these are the best pieces of art I've ever made, that I'm not here to make good paintings. I'm here to practice and hone the skills that I'm learning. And if that results in a painting that's a bit worse than what I could do, that's just the cost of learning. Like practice and performance are completely different. And right now I'm practicing, I'm not performing. So I don't need to do my very best aesthetically. Plus, there's hundreds of paintings to do. This one's just a drop in the bucket and it's not precious at all. I feel like that's been one of the best parts of Evolve for me, how it's forcing me to both make finished work and make a huge volume of work. 
I feel like I've heard over and over again that you can't be precious with your work because then you'll always push yourself to make each piece better than the last and that results in no experimentation or going outside of your comfort zone. Back when I did like three artworks a year, they were all so precious to me and I was like, oh no, I couldn't make another piece of art because like, what if it's worse than this one? Then I won't be a real artist and like I had all these weird thoughts in my head. Now I'm on my 54th homework assignment and well, I know I can do it again, that no piece is just a fluke. It did feel that way at first, but dozens of paintings later, I can trust that I kind of know what I'm doing. And I think this is the start of what they refer to as confidence. So I did the main subject of the painting first and I left the background for the next day. When I came back, I moved all the blobs of paint from the first palette onto a second new palette. It wastes a bit of paint, like the stuff that was left on the other palette, but it's just so much easier to mix everything on one palette. Like before, the burnt umber was all blobbed up, so I had to get some fresh out of the tube. Overall, as I was mixing and painting the background, I felt like it was a bit thick and hard to spread, even though most of the paint was still fresh out of the tube. Next time, I'll try just using fresh paint for the second day and only using old paint if it was already mixed up to like fix the edges on the objects that were already painted. After I finished, I looked at it and I was like, oh my god, the proportions are so off and I can clearly see that the shadow on the body of the chicken is too dark compared to the light. And I even wrote that in the homework tool and I was like, I know all these things are wrong with it. But this time I got like a different grader who graded my homework. He was like, I don't know, it's like not that bad. You're pretty spot on. <laughs> like the chicken's legs could be a bit thicker, but you know, you're doing good. And I was like, whoa, this is weird. Like. <laughs> Like before, like all my homeworks, there was just this da 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 da, like long, huge list of things that were wrong with it. But I guess the grading can be subjective. I feel like something that Kevin has told me is that if you start getting like nitpicks on just little things in your homework, that means that everything else is pretty much perfect. So there's not much else to say, which like I guess is great, but also not great. <laughs> I don't know, taking criticism and critique is just hard for me. It makes me nervous, like I'm not very good at it, but something that I need to work on on my end is like not taking it personally and just using it as a tool to get better with my art. <laughs> because when I get that critique, the first thing I think is like, oh, and I get all defensive. And that kind of attitude closes you off to taking that and using it to learn, which is stressful, but that's definitely something that I want to develop over this next year as I want to learn art seriously. So then after homework 14, I had my meeting with the instructor to go over my gradients. And this was with the instructor that was a bit more harsh with the critiques on my homework. And that made me really nervous. I'm like, is he gonna tell me that my stuff is just trash and it's terrible? And I went into it with that attitude, which, you know, is not the best because again, it closes you off to learning. And I asked him about it and I was like, I just think I've forgotten how to do gradients. He's like, what are you talking about? Like your gradients are great. They just need a little bit of work. And so we talked through that and he gave me some pointers on how I could like move my brushes differently, how to do the paint. And I was like, wow, that was actually really useful and really helpful. And I don't know why I felt like so defensive. I don't know. Anyway, he was talking about how he had gotten into Evolve a few years earlier. And after he started, he was just like, well, time to just do this full time and quit my job. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I've heard like a couple other people say that too, including me. After getting into Evolve, I was like, I just want to quit my job and study this full time. I guess there's just something about this curriculum and like the learning and what they teach that just gives people such confidence that like this is the place to learn skills. <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty crazy. I guess we'll see how it turns out for all of us. Anyway, so talking with the instructor and getting that help was actually a great experience. And I'm really excited to be able to put that knowledge into practice on my next painting. In the end, homework 11 took 6 hours and 36 minutes, homework 12 took 5 hours and 16 minutes, homework 13 took 9 hours and 6 minutes, but that includes like over an hour of lesson video, 
and homework 14 took 6 hours and 51 minutes. So I have 7 paintings left in block 3, and I'm really excited to see how much progress I can make working through the rest of the block. As far as studying in New Jersey is concerned, I'm still looking for an apartment because the housing market is apparently insane right now. Um, I found a new apartment here in Chicago, and I'm having trouble subleasing this current apartment for I have no idea why. I've literally talked to like 35 people, I've given 15 tours, and nothing so far. So hopefully that all works out. I'll be visiting New Jersey next week, which is really exciting. I'll be able to meet Kevin, Piper, some of the students there, and take a look around. If you want to stay updated on my art learning journey, be sure to subscribe so you get all the notifications and stay in touch. Remember to stay safe and healthy out there, and remember that talent is a myth. Now, get back to work.